Hello, everybody. It's Dee and Renee. And yep, I am back. So uh, Dee and I are excited to talk today about all of her fabulous uh, radish recipes. So if you love a radish, give us a thumbs up. So Dee, how are you? How's it been going in the hat? It's a going. It's a going. Last couple weeks, Mother Nature is still off her medication, and we've had a foot <laughs> of rain and hail and sleet. And today we're 85 degrees. Oh my! Yeah, we're 85 Fahrenheit. Yeah, you know, we're just trying to stay in the game here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm broadcasting today from um, Las Vegas, and so um, I have a couple of locations where I uh, come from, and so I uh, just finished my trip to Italy, and um, if you guys are coming on live, tell us that you are on live, say hello hashtag live. Um, if you have been vacationing, tell us a little bit about how that's going. So give us some good comments today, you guys. I have been, I've just spent two weeks in Italy on the islands of Ischia and Capri. So um, I have to tell you, Dee, I've ate a lot of pasta, a little <laughs> bit of pizza, and a lot of veggies. So the one thing that I love, love, love over in Italy is tons of fresh veggies. Everything is ripe. Everything's vine ripened. Um, you know, lots of uh, good stuff. And and it's just it it uh, revitalizes you and refreshes you and and makes you realize how important it is for all of us to eat real, real food. You know, um, I, I mean, we're, as Americans, we tend to want everything quick, everything fast, everything, uh, you know, just pick it up and go. And um, it's, it's really good to slow down and, and see how other people do it. I was dreaming of olives for you. I was wondering. Oh my God! I I so so many olives. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, again, another healthy fat that mm -hmm. we are we forget. You know, um, I, although I have to tell you, when anytime they serve you like a, a glass of wine, like in the evening time, we would have a spritz or what have you. They serve potato chips, peanuts, and olives. So, of course, it's a little tempting to want to grab those potato chips and peanuts, but um, when you start eating those olives and realizing this is a healthy fat and it's it's a good little appetizer. So, you know, finding things, especially in phase four, that you can, you know, really incorporate in your lifestyle. So um, th those were all good things. <laughs> all right. So um, Dee has created some amazing radish recipes. And, and I have to tell you, you guys, um, we it, it's so funny because we've tried all different formats of our show and, and different, you know, doing themes and all different kinds of stuff. And, you know, the shows that really get the most watching is the vegetable shows. <laughs> I mean, really, awesome. your, your vegetables. Give us a thumbs up, you guys, if you love Dee's vegetable recipes, because they're just, you know, again, talking about real food. I love it. So Can tell us better. what we got here, Dee. So this is a, just a really simple um, radish. Um, now, I don't know how to pronounce this properly, Renee, because I didn't actually Google it, but uh, is it a Rata, a rata. Um, I, I it's thought that you called it a, a riata, and honestly, I haven't had time to look it up either. Um, so, what is a, what is a riata? 
I thought it was a, mar- I just, I was a margarita. I just, I just know it as a radish yogurt dip. Um, but I went Googling. I went to the land of Google to try to find out what you're really supposed to call it uh, to be authentic. And this is what it's supposed to be called. So what you see pictured is a phase one and two version for sure. But in phase three, you can add a cup uh, or and three and four, you can add a cup of full fat yogurt to this existing recipe um, for your healthy fat and then to help you scoop that up and enjoy it, you know, as a veggie dip or with some of your IP chips. But just as it is pictured, very simple, very fresh a little bit of lime flavor comes through, your little bit of olive oil. These are great places to use your flavored olive oils, your infused olive oils and these types of fresh salads. So really you could use this as a topper for any type of your protein, um, particularly with fish. You're gonna see a little bit more of that today. You could add it as a salad topper, again, use it as a dip um, and yeah, phase four, you can put that healthy fat in there. So. Really Really, really um, fresh and simple and delicious. This one has cilantro and meat and uh, grated radish, a little bit of red onion. So, yeah, simple, delicious, versatile. It looks delicious. If mm-hmm. you are on here and you want to uh, receive these recipes, they go out every Monday in our newsletter. All you have to do is type in the word newsletter and uh, you're going to get a two-step process. All you have to do is say yes and then you hit the newsletter button and it will give you the subscription form so that you can sign up to get these amazing recipes. And we, you know what, we also on DeesRecipes.com we also have a, a blog where you can go and uh, you can see all of the recipes for the last uh, over a year we uh, have been putting on this show. So remember, every Wednesday, and unfortunately, we're a little bit late today, and that's my fault. All right, okay. so what do we got here? We got some tuna, so- we got some dill. Mm-hmm. This is really another uh, another really simple um, rat. Radish, uh, mental radish and green onion, and you can use it slash topping um, for your fish, your pork, your your poultry. So you can chop up a bowl of this wonderful veggie marinade and take some of it and actually marinate your protein in it and then prepare it all in one pan or one dish stovetop or in the oven. I chose tuna just because it is such a fast uh, flash in the pan. Uh, and tuna isn't quite as delicate, you know, as your cod or your mahi mahi or, but it is a, the flavors pair beautifully because it's still a mild fish. Um, if you enjoy fennel, I would encourage you um, the stocky, the hard stocky part you don't eat, but the bulb and the fronds. So the fronds are what you see on the outside of the plate there. They pair beautifully with radish, very nicely with radish. So fennel and radish, um, they I really like them together. So they're a very nice accompaniment. So, so yeah. Fronds, so, so the fronds, are those the dill or are those the fennel? That's fennel. Those are fennel oh, okay. fronds that you see there. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got that. Yeah. And then there is dill and fennel and uh, green onion and radish in this marinade. Um, but the cool thing is um, you make the marinade as a two cup bowl of your select veggies with a little bit of seasonings. And then you can use it as a marinade slash one bowl dish to prepare. So something that you can have made ahead ready to go for really you wanted to do some barbecuing you could barbecue your protein of it warm over that fresh marinade slash salad as well so really multi-purpose um again you could also literally throw this just right over a plain lettuce uh boston or bib or romaine and it's delicious all on its own so if you're looking for ways to get some flavorful veggies in there this one's a good a good one as well yeah oh i love it so um if you are on here 
and you are live. Give us a hashtag live. I want to say hello to our friend Wendy White Stevens. She's coming from Colorado right now. Now, I met her in Texas uh, at a uh, Cinco de Mayo party, but um, a phase one Cinco de Mayo party, by the way, um, with Sarah Mulero. Um, so tell us, um, if you're on here, give us a hashtag live. Tell us what you're cooking, what your favorite recipes are. While I was gone in Italy, Dee was broadcasting about peppers and cabbage and uh, had some more fantastic recipes. Um, I'll be throwing up the recipe cards uh, in the next couple of days, but the newsletter did go out, I know, with, uh, I think, the cabbages, right? The cabbage recipes, I think. So, um, Dee, tell us what's next. Love these biscuits. Okay, so D has um, gone. A yeah. little bit. Are you there? D is. Um, okay, so it's me and the biscuits. We're going to wait for D to come back up here. In the meantime, hi, Cynthia. Um, tell us uh, a little bit about um, what your favorite recipes are. I was just talking about how we um, really get the most play um, from recipes that are, are related around vegetables. So um, one of the things that you learn on phase one is how important it is to incorporate four cups of veggies um, in your in your daily regimen. And, and one of the, the big takeaways for me in phase one, and, and I did phase one back in 2012, is how important that is and, and um, what a, a big part of my life it has become because I have to tell you, once I did this program, I never stopped eating my four cups of veggies. So um, yeah, let's have Dee come on back up here. And um, Dee, are you there? I think we she keeps refreshing. So anyway, um, things I I love um, are you know just loving uh, learning about different veggies. Okay, Cynthia says. Um, Cut my first celery root and uh, baked for fries today. So did you um, use an air fryer? I, I love to use the air fryer. It makes things come out nice and crispy on the outside and uh, good on the inside and, and it's super quick. Um, so love, love that, that you did the celery root fries. Um, some of the things that we're going to be talking about today are, um, this is a radish mash. Um, has anybody, does anybody use radish as a potato substitute? Um, because I have to tell you that the first time I tried it, I was so amazed. And one of, one of the things that I've always enjoyed is uh, my Sunday breakfast was like two fried eggs and some uh, radish or uh, potatoes, you know, on Sunday morning. So um, radishes are like little red potatoes and um, actually really, really yummy. Um, okay, so Cynthia, I don't have an air fryer, so I bake them in the oven. Yeah, they take a little bit longer. Um, I noticed that they take about 45 minutes. Um, in the oven, but what I will do is I will put whatever I'm using, whether it's rutabaga or celery root. Um, I've used, uh, seems like there's other things I've used. What do you guys like for potato substitutes? Tell me <laughs> what that is. Um, okay, so Cynthia says, I put radishes in the crock pot with a roast. Yes, aren't you amazed at, at how they can be a potato substitute and, and um, s simple stuff we can do for the rest of our lives. So, you know, that's a lifestyle change that is permanent. Um, I went on, uh, honestly, I tried the Atkins diet when I was about, I don't know, 38 years old and realized how 
important the ketogenic diet was for me because I'm very, you know, instantly insulin resistant. My family had a lot of diabetes in it and hypoglycemia. So I got rid of potatoes, you know, 25 years, well, about 20 years ago and um, never looked back. And every once in a while I'll, you know, have something, but I, I tend not to you know, eat potatoes and, and I do use them as a, uh, you know, radishes or celery root or uh, turnips, uh, rutabaga. Um, so these guys here are um, radish chips um, that, that D uh, put together. And uh, so I know that I've made zucchini chips. I haven't made radish chips yet. Is there anybody out there that's made radish chips? Um, let us know, let us know where you're from and give us a hashtag live. Tell us what your favorite types of recipes are and, um, how you're incorporating this into your new lifestyle and, uh, how phase one is going for you and, and how you incorporate all of these recipes. Now, this is a radish goulash. And remember that all of these recipes um, are coming out on Monday. Uh, they will be in the Monday newsletter. And uh, all you have to do is type in the word newsletter. So if you don't already receive our newsletter, just type in the word newsletter and uh, there will be a two-step process. You just have to say yes, and then um, you'll be able to click on the newsletter to get the subscription. Um, so uh, this is uh, the ending recipe, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to pick up D again. Um, she's having some internet problems. Um, so let's just talk for a minute about phase one um, and about vacationing. So I just came off of a vacation where I spent two weeks in Italy and um, really, you know, of course, when we um, when we are going to be vacationing, of course, we want to really enjoy ourselves, right? Um, we want to, uh, you know, we, we kind of sometimes have that attitude of, well, you know, I'm on vacation, so, you know, what the heck, I'll start when I uh, get back from vacation. And uh, D, I am just talking about a little bit about vacation, um, and uh, so I'm going to pop these guys back back up here so we can finish talking about them. So um, I have uh, showed them all, but go ahead and let's talk about this goulash. So I love a good goulash uh, made with almost any type of vegetable and a radish one does not disappoint. Um, you could easily make a phase four one, but this is a phase one. Um, I almost want to call it like a loaded goulash. It is done with four ounces of ground beef. It is done with a cup and a half of radish. It's got green onion in there and it uses the IP mac and cheese. So you got your, your cheesy flavor in there and your noodles. It is a hearty meal. Now I chose to protein split this day that I was making this recipe. So I had four ounces and two cups of vegetables at lunch and then had an additional four ounces at supper time. That is my actual preferred way of um, using my protein in the day. Um, I know a lot of you are different. Um, I do know that um, a lot um, say that eight ounces is too much. Um, but I also want to remind you that you need to be weighing and measuring your protein sources raw before starting. And so if you actually measure out four ounces of extra lean grass fed beef, it's really not that much to incorporate into a recipe. So uh, just another little plug there for you should be weighing and measuring your food before eating it and not eyeballing it um, for optimal success. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, some of the things, uh, if, if you guys split your protein up, um, let us know. Yes, I, I like to split my protein up. Sometimes um, with my clients, I will say, you know, 
it's okay to have a boiled egg in between breakfast and lunch. You take off and you know one and a half ounces of protein at that point, and then uh, maybe you want to do two more ounces at lunchtime with your salad, and then you know the the balance of of your protein later, and that's perfectly fine. Right, Miss Dan? Yeah, and you betcha. And you'll often see in a lot of recipes that I do use a whole egg um, very, very often. And one of the reasons why I do one large egg gives you 1.5 ounces of protein. You can deduct that. Right. So an, an egg is one and a half ounces. Right. Yeah, a large one. Um, there is a chart if extra large is closer to two ounces. If you buy medium, if one ounce small is about a And I know some of you have seen me write a 0 0.75 in instructions, and then you go question mark, question mark, question mark. And that is, you know, it's not quite an ounce. If you want to be technical, I write the 0.75 for you in there. So, <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. So yeah. tell us about these. Um, tell us about these radish chips. So, you know, we of course we see a lot of veggie chips out there. You can buy a lot of commercial done brands and a lot of uh, commercially uh, ones in uh, chip bags. Um, the, I don't buy them, so the brand names don't um, come to the top of my head. But when you flip them over to read the nutritional label, they take a good healthy veggie and they take all the health out of it. Um, there is more fat and carbs and calories in those um, healthy veggie chips than there is in the in, in your old-fashioned potato chip. So buyer beware, but when you make them at home, you can control that 100%. Um, these radishes were quite large um, when they started. So that's my tip there. You need to buy radishes that are at least at least an inch and a half to two inches in diameter or use the uh, daikon radishes um, in this case that are um, have some girth to them because they do shrink down quite a bit. Um, so this, if you are a hungry, hungry person, don't make radish chips. Um, if you have a smaller appetite and are having trouble getting your veggies in, make radish chips because <laughs> they shrink down to a smaller um, portion. Um, really delicious, really simple to make. Rosemary on though. So now, so now what's, what's like, what is the just flavor like in relationship to potatoes? Do they, do they taste like potato chips? Okay, sorry guys, we're having some technical difficulties today. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Are you there, D? Okay. Thank you. So we, we can't we can't really hear you, D. So you're cutting Hello. in and out. Oh. Yeah, we're we're having trouble with your audio. Uh oh. Are so anyway, back? so let's talk about the the mash, the radish mash. What what I was asking you earlier was, um, what's the flavoring like from a radish chip to like a potato chip? Okay, guys. Reverse there. All right, so. Let's go, to, go. Let's go back to talking about travel. So, um, one of the things I think that um, a lot of times we do is we kind of throw in the towel. Well, I'm on vacation. I've paid for that cruise. I want to get my money's worth. I'm going to go to you know all eight meals. Um, think about. Uh, all of the work that you've done, all of, think about yourself, think about your own um, sense of, of confidence, how far you've come, the changes you've made in your lifestyle, and keep those while you're on vacation. And I'm not talking about don't have fun, don't, you know, 
enjoy yourself. Um, when I was in Italy, I ate a lot of veggies. And, and of course, you know, they have lots of fresh seafood. And um, so I ate a lot of those things. In addition, when I would eat a pasta or, you know, that type of like a carb or a bread, um, you know, I was really careful to talk, you know, to really think about and ask about, is this homemade? Is this something that you have made in-house? Because, you know, just like here, we can end up with um, packaged goods. So if I'm gonna eat pasta someplace, it's going to be someplace that made it themselves. And, you know, the great, the great thing about, um, Europe is they, they do have different standards as far as GMO products and, and the different types of, of things, you know, that they do and, and, and that they allow. So, um, yes, I did have a few things, but I have to tell you, I walked so much that I came back weighing the same as I left, which is shocking but it's true and it can be done and you can do it. And so I encourage everybody to enjoy their vacations, but enjoy it with balance and, um, you know, make good choices. Uh, when I would have a cocktail in the evening time, I would have a spritz, which is basically a big wine glass that had half Prosecco and half uh, Pellegrino. So really good option, um, you know, alcohol is fun and all, but it is empty calories and they add up super fast. So if you're going someplace, you know, think about when you're having a glass of wine, you know, maybe cutting it with, maybe making a spritz out of it. Um, you can do that with any kind of a wine. Um, if you're, you know, looking at you're in phase four and you want to have, you know, a, a drink, take a look at how to do that. Maybe it's a vodka soda and you order it tall so that there's a lot more water and only just a little bit of alcohol and, and um, really um, making balanced choices. So um, if you are going to have a dessert, share it with someone, take one or two bites. That's all you need. Um, you get that little sweet flavor and, and then it doesn't, you know, spiral you out of control out into uh, a place where you can't stop eating um, all of those things. So um, those are just kind of some of the balanced choices that I make on vacation while I am, um, you know, in, in maintenance. And if you are on phase one, it's easy to travel on phase one. Um, I always, I, I like to sometimes go into more like a phase two uh, with some of my clients. It just depends on, you know, what they're doing, what their plans are. Um, if they're gonna be doing a lot of white walking and exercising, a lot of times then I'll say, hey, why don't we do more like a phase two protocol? You're still in ketosis, you're still, um, you know, in, in that same, you know, under 35 or right around 35 carbs, net carbs, um, but, uh, you know, allowing yourself a little more regular food. So two meals that are eight ounces of protein and two cups of veggies, and then you have your morning IP and your snack bar in the afternoon, and, and that's a really easy way to travel. Um, so if you guys have questions, please uh, put them in the comments section. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get deep back today. Um, if you are interested in all these great radish recipes, they will be featured in Monday's newsletter. And all you have to do is type in the word newsletter and you will be sent through Facebook Messenger uh, the the subscription. So uh, if you are watching this in the replay, give us a hashtag replay, tell us where you're from. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. We're here every Wednesday. All right, everybody. Thank you so much and see you next week.